All right. Hello again, and welcome back. This lady pop hunter, isn't she lovely? <laughs> I always think so. And me. David. Because I don't have a nickname. David I guess I, I, I guess I don't need one. <laughs> No, I guess I don't need one. And today we were going to talk about this has come up a few times and I've gone back and forth with people in the comment section about it, about Funko limited edition runs. Are they really that limited? Mm -hmm. And so it's enough that it could be a discussion all by itself. So we're just going to go ahead and go for it today. Before we do that, we get a couple of other things that we want to do. Uh, one thing I would like to do is show this off. If you remember the video we did not too long ago, I had a quilt that she had made, a Star Wars quilt, and I showed it off. I just wanted to show this. I don't know how well you can see this, but... You might have to stand up and back up. <laughs> yeah. It's a Christmas stocking. Yes. <laughs> it is quilted, by the way. This is this is thick. You hang it up Marble. over your fireplace. Yeah. Marble, I hang this over the fireplace, it's going to catch fire. Marble themed, Captain America themed actually, quilted giant size stocking that she made, which I think is awesome. And what are you going to put in it? I don't know. I might put your Christmas gift in there. It should fit. Really? And then have some socks and underwear. Who can't use that? Nobody wants socks and underwear. A gift that that's keeps on awesome. giving. You that's have a, it for months. That's after a the that's a gift of months, huh? I yeah. hope it lasts longer than that. Yeah. Last longer than that if you wash them. <laughs> I should think. I should think anyway. that. Uh, I don't think anybody likes getting socks or underwear. Yeah. You want socks and underwear for Christmas? Put it in the comment section. It's a good gift. Do you have? You have any shout outs today? Yeah, I have one. Okay. Um, I hope I pronounced his name right, but Tyrone Saris. Tyrone Tyrone Tyronosaurus. X. X. I've seen him comment before. Yeah, he comments a lot. Yeah. He doesn't have his own content content on his channel. It's just a bunch of likes um on there. But he's uh, a subscriber. He comments a lot. Mm -hmm. So just want to give a shout out to him and say hi and thank you for uh, watching and uh, constantly commenting. It's appreciated. Okay. And also, mm -hmm. um, before we get going, I had some pickups okay. this week. I have a friend who owns <clears throat> a vintage toy, kind of toy store and he does trades. And so I did some trades with him and I picked this stuff up. And this is the uh, Tamashi you know, SH Figure Arts. Fig Arts, Figure Arts. I'm still not sure about the pronunciation on that. However, I've got the trunks from Dragon Ball Z, the limited edition one. I've got the Super Saiyan Gohan. I've got the Super Saiyan Goku with his torn up clothing there. And these are really well detailed figures. I like these. And one of my favorites here. The Samurai Iron Man. These are outstanding figures if you've seen these. Quite a hefty price tag on the Samurai. They do these for Marvel characters and for Star, Star Wars. Wars. Yeah, because yeah. we saw the, that guy that wears the white. So I got those. Mm -hmm. The Stormtroopers. 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 <clears throat> They've got a bunch of them at, well, not, too, ma not too many. Barnes & Noble has a handful. Yeah. You don't see very many of them. Yeah, and I actually like those. I'm not a Star Wars fan at all, but I thought that was pretty, pretty cool. The detail in them is really great. Yeah, I mean, I won't get it, but I thought it was cool. I'd like to get it. But And this is something else I just wanted to throw out here because mm -hmm. there's been a buzz in the Funko community about those 10-inch hulks <laughs> that are exclusive to the Target. Mm -hmm. And it's not what you think because I know the Target is no nefarious for not being able to find exclusives. Yeah, You can find these, but you may not want them. Take a look at this. Apparently, most of them have been arriving at Target's broken. 
Mm. You see the hammers floating around in the package there? Yeah, that's a mess. And this ties in with our last video mm -hmm. where we were talking about the the three-tiered model yeah, of quality. manufacturing. And this, is, this falls in the quality uh, section of that talk that we had because if this was a better quality of product, the hammer wouldn't have been glued to his hand. It would have went through his hand. He would have grabbed it like a fist. You have a thing. G grab one of your things to show what <laughs> I'm talking about. All right. <clears throat> I'll give you the the whole the way it's supposed to look here. There you go. Yeah. See how on um, this figure, the hammer goes through his hands. He's making a fist, and on the fun coat, it looks like he's making a fist around the hammer. But all they did was glue the head to his hand. Yeah, they cut corners with it because you can see the hole in his hand yeah. where it was designed for a peg and to uh, cut corners to save a few bucks on some vinyl, I guess, mm -hmm. they took that end off of that hammer and just glued the base right on top of his hand, and they're breaking off. Yeah, they're so it's like, off. who's going to pay? Well, who's going to want that? So Funko already got their money, but Target is the one that's going to lose out because now they're going to have all these hulks that they bought, mm -hmm. and the majority of them are broken. So now the employees won't steal them. Yeah, you and got the, that much um, going for you. Anyway. Yeah, but the uh, consumer <sighs> is not going to buy it if they look. And I mean, this is kind of obvious. It's not like you didn't pay attention. It's kind of obvious that it's broken. So now you're going to have all this stuff that you can't sell, and you're going to have to mark it down to get rid of it. Yeah, and they, and the comments are like, and what one comment that stood out for me in particular was like, you know, I could glue that. I could fix that. I could mm -hmm. glue that back on, but yeah. hey, Funko, it's the principle of the thing. Yeah, I mean, it's obviously fixable, but <clears throat> yeah. why should you have to? If if Funko had just took the time, slowed it down a bit, and say, okay, let's make it where the Hulk is actually grabbing, he has his whole hands around the hammer, instead of gluing it on there, then it would have stayed in. And you see the knob on the bottom. Yeah, and then they have so, a knob on the bottom so to it, make it look like he, he originally. Goes it looks his like hands. it was originally intended to intended to peg through. Yeah. And they said, "Oh, how much would we save? We're making how many? And you know, will, may, will we save a couple hundred bucks if we cut that stem?" I don't know if that and was about saving or about speed. That too, because it's the three models, the three items of the model was uh, speed overall quality and price and the argument was that for some reason toy manufacturers and also video games but yeah. we're talking about toys here toy manufacturers seem to get away with pissing all over that model yeah. because if you in the model you can have two but not all three mm -hmm. because you're gonna piss the customers off it, you, any other company that did that that um, had shoddy timelines poor quality and then had the nerve to overcharge you you wouldn't tolerate it but for some reason with toys, you people will. It doesn't make any sense. But yeah, that's what that's what happened. And that's a, a classic example of what it was we were talking about. That it just kinda kinda came undone on them like that. They're yeah. falling apart in the packages. And oh, one more thing I wanted to run over, because somebody had been asking me about this. You know I've done a couple of videos on Listia, because I used to trade pretty heavily on Listia, mm -hmm. but they really screwed the pooch, so to speak. Mm -hmm. They monetized their credits, which theoretically made it into a cryptocurrency. They did not manage it properly, mm -hmm. and the value of the of the list of credits have tanked over the last couple of years. Mm. They're practically worthless now. So what happened was, I, I recommended. I did a video not so long ago where I recommended. You probably shouldn't bother with Listia anymore. It's it's pretty much done in. I don't I don't see it recovering. They had some things they can do to fix it, but they just won't do it. Mm. They won't do these these uh, simple tricks to fix whatever's going on with their with their whole system. They could get it under control. They just don't care. What they've announced now, and I've gotten a few questions about this, is they are going to merge with an official cryptocurrency called Inc. Mm. 
because you know everybody knows what Bitcoin is, but there's actually like around 500 or so cryptocurrencies. Mm -hmm. Okay, and some of them nobody wants to bother with, and some of them are legible. They you know they're they're reliable, and they said well since they're going to merge with Inc and make the list of your credits compatible with Inc. Mm -hmm. with the Inc. cryptocurrency official currency, will that help Listia out? I don't think so. I think, if anything, Listia is going to help Inc. out for a little while. Here's the trick. Um, Bitcoin is number one on the list of cryptocurrencies, and Steemit, a lot of people have heard of Steam currency, it's like number 37 mm -hmm. on the list. You know, if you're in the top 50, you're fine. Right now, Inc. is 187 on their list. It's not even in the top 100. Mm. The only reason it's 187 is because of the announcement from Listia. Prior to that, it wasn't even in the top 200. Mm. Doesn't sound like a reliable thing to me at all. It sounds to me like Listia is helping them more so than they're going to help Listia. There must be some financial connection between the two anyway. And so when it goes official... Inc. will probably benefit from it for a while, but I would I wouldn't hang on to it for too long. It seems kind of kind of unstable to me. Okay. So that's just my advice on that. Mm -hmm. Now to the actual subject. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, are Funko Limited runs really that limited, or are they creating a false demand by? putting the word exclusive or convention exclusive on something because that implies that they're limited but doesn't necessarily mean that they really are and in particular today we're talking about numbered runs mm -hmm. because this was the argument all right this is the argument and it came from this and you had brought this up not yeah. too long ago recognize this one mm -hmm. this was a new york comic con exclusive and as you can see, limited to 4,000 pieces. Mm -hmm. And so was also the Thundercats 3-pack. Yeah. However, you can go into any Toys R Us right now and find this on the shelf. It has a dedicated spot, and these are on the shelf. So what happened? Because when we went to the Toys R Us, I don't know how every Toys R Us looked at the time. There was something like a half a dozen of these mm -hmm. on the table or more. So, but you know, maybe they all didn't get that many. Let's run the numbers, and I ran the numbers. So, how do you know there's four thousand just because it says four thousand on the sticker? Yeah. Let's break it down. So, assume that each Toys R Us got at least one box, so four of them. Maybe some because ours had like six or eight, so maybe some got less. Well, you got to first figure out how many Toys R Us there are. There's 863 in the U.S. Oh. Well, I'm going to assume that the foreign ones, that, you know, in other countries did not get one. Okay. Just the ones in the U.S. did. Mm -hmm. So there's 860 in the Toys R Us. Mm -hmm. If we assume they each got an average of four, that's 3,452 of these already, plus about 500 for the convention. Just a guesstimate. Right. To that's sell at the show. Thousand. That's your 4000 right there. Mm -hmm. Why is Toys R Us still, because these sold out, why are they still opening cases of these and putting them on the shelf in a dedicated spot? Yeah. Because, what, three months later? Yeah. Because the, the, the Comic Con was in September, right? Or yes. October I believe or something it was, like that. And now it's December. Uh -huh. I mean, it was months ago is the point. And, uh, it's still sitting there, and and it's not just this one. It's um, cause like he said, we saw the uh, Thundercats, Thundercats four pack, and you still see other. Like today, we were in GameStop and we saw four Dwight's that came out at the Comic Con yeah. at one GameStop. Yeah, they had they're, they're just putting them out. It, yeah, it's, it, it's it was it was four. So you know. I don't know. And I know we talked about this before, but it's just, I don't believe those numbers. I don't believe they had 4,000 because, you know, again, you you have to have some for the Comic-Con and then the stores get them. 
but the store still have them in the store. We well, the store we went to yesterday, a couple of days ago, was not the store we went to on the day of the Comic Con. The day of the Comic Con, that's the store we went to had about six. Mm -hmm. The one we went to a few days ago had three sitting on the shelf still. Okay. So. And they, but they were sold out that day. Because when we were there, to uh, we were there opening day yeah. for for the sale, and we grabbed one of those and two of the Thundercats, one for each of us. Yeah, two Beast Man. Yeah, two Beast Man, one for then each of us. You had a Destro. Yes, I had a Destro. And I think that was it. But all that stuff was gone. But you know, by the time we were through the line and around, uh, that table was wiped out pretty yeah. much. And then the vinyls, the uh, the Thundercats vinyl two pack, they got so many more of those. The shelves full of them. Yeah. We were in one Toys R Us. They must have had twenty four of them on the I shelf. I don't know if they had twenty four. Fifty of them. They probably <laughs> had about five. Or this one, which I've brought this one up before to make examples of of how, you know, just because it's got a limited number doesn't mean it's valuable. The Flocked Hot Topics Dr. Seuss Cat in the Hat limited to 1,500 pieces for a while there. These were all over the place. Mm -hmm. So how then, how do I know there's only 1,500? You know, it, you're, you're telling me that basically every Hot Topic got three or less? I don't think. Yeah, and I mean, and, and then also sense. you got to count, make a count for, if you go on uh, eBay and Amazon Entertainment Earth, a couple of other uh, Toy Wiz, a couple of other websites. They all have these same things. Mm. They all have these same things. So, still, you're saying this one is fifteen hundred. The Batman was four thousand. They're still sitting in Toys R Us, and they're still on these various websites. So, did you really make the amount you said, or did you just say that so you can run the price up? There's no way to validate it just no. from a sticker. And this is where um, statues come into it. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, I, I, I've got statues. Mm -hmm. And they're all limited number runs. Yeah. But if you take the statue out and you turn it over, a lot of you guys know this. There's a number on the bottom. That's handwritten. But what does it say? It says number 257 of 2,000 pieces. Yeah. And then you have a certificate with the same handwritten information on it. So that if you ever did go and explore that, mm -hmm. you will discover that that you should not find your number with anyone else. Yeah. There's some. They try to give you some validation. Mm -hmm. Hell, even collectors' plates do it, and yeah. they make and they make, make tons a million of, of those them. Things. Yeah. They uh they crank those out all over the place, but um. Statue, you know, they've caught on to that. The statues that say, hey, we want to give you some little bit of validation, especially since, you, I mean, these aren't, like, terribly expensive, but the statues want to give you some validation, mm -hmm. especially, like, you know, Sideshow. They a limited edition of 350 pieces. You're paying a 1000 bucks for it. Yeah, you want We're going to give them. you, this is number 34 of a 1000 Mm-hmm. Uh, we guarantee you that you're not going to find another number, another number 34 anywhere. Yeah. But like this, I have no way of knowing because I mean, if the sticker, if they could print the sticker and they could do it because it's just like the same way, you know, I mentioned before I used to work for uh free delay that they could print a different number on every single bag yeah. because they got to put uh they put time codes mm -hmm. on the bag so every bag has a different printed number you could do the same thing with the sticker where it says four thousand pieces and then underneath is another number one thousand and three hundred and fifty five so and progressively go that way to help to give some validation to it it wouldn't take much because then it, it, they just have a sticker sheet with a row of numbers on it, mm -hmm. and then they just put the sticker on each product. Mm -hmm. It would, I think, it would offer some validation. But like this, I have no way of knowing. And yeah, but I mean, I don't care about val validation for a what, ten dollar product. You know, well, that's twenty five. Well, twenty five. But the thing, the point is, okay, you made four thousand. I mm -hmm. could care less if you made ten thousand if it was what I wanted. 
You know what I mean? It doesn't matter that you made 1500 of this thing if I don't want it. Mm -hmm. I could care less because I don't want this. I don't even like it. I don't even know what this is. That's cat in a hat. Oh, okay. I thought it was the, the one with the blue hair. But anyway, the point is, is like, why even bother putting this information on it if you're not going to hold yourself to it? To create a feeding frenzy. Yeah, you you creating a false sense of um, I was gonna say false sense of obligation. You're gonna create this false. That's a whole different discussion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna say that put this whole false sense out there that oh I have to get this because it's only fifteen hundred out there when really you got ten thousand out there. You know. So why even bother? Just put that. It's from Hot Topic. And mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's not flopped. Oh, it, yeah, is. it is. Oh, it doesn't say It's hard say to tell because he's Well, it usually he's says flopped, but yeah. just put down there Hot Topic exclusive. You still sell it. If people want it, it'll sell. Yeah. If people don't want it, it's not going to sell. And, and Funko should know that. They have a lot of stuff that still sits on the shelf. Well, sometimes they put a number on it to sell it. Like the, like the I've talked about that, the James Gunn. Mm -hmm. figure that was limited to 500 pieces how many of that so i don't know uh, they're all gone actually yeah but because it's only because of that number otherwise nobody would want it because nobody really knew who james gunn they was they still don't know who Geek james the, the guy who directed uh guardians of the galaxy oh, okay. but uh yeah. <laughs> which is funny because on the back of the box they show a bunch of the Guardians of the Galaxy figures, and he's holding a couple, mm -hmm. just in case you don't make the connection. But he's like, you know, and he's sitting there like, like this, mm -hmm. like he has. What the hell are these? I'm doing a photo op. Okay, just <laughs> can we get this over with, please? He probably never saw those before in his life. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, if they didn't put that 500 limited edition stamp on it, mm -hmm. it wouldn't have sold. Yeah, I, nobody I'm cares about some, so. some director. It's like if they made a uh, Funko Pop of Tennessee Williams. They, <laughs> it's like, who cares? Yeah, who is that? He's a, he's a playwright. No. He, he was a writer. You know, a cat on a hot tin roof. Mm -hmm. Okay. No, I like <laughs> I think that was his. Unless I'm getting them mixed up. But, um... Yeah, but anyways, I mean, with a 500 limited run, you can you can kind of feel it if if there's more than that. But when you're getting up to limited 4,000 pieces, limited 6,000, something like that, you really don't know. No. You really don't know. It also opens up the door for counterfeits, which is a big complaint in the pop community also mm -hmm. with the stuff that's available from China. Because that's where the stuff is made. Mm -hmm. Just because they stopped production on something, you don't. How do you know that they're not cranking a few extra off over mm -hmm. there and then selling them aftermarket on eBay or something? Because half the pops you look at on eBay, it says ships from China. Yeah, and then you never get it. Oh. And you pay this ridiculous price in this. <laughs> well, the price is really cheap, but the shipping is through the roof, mm -hmm. and then you never get it. But luckily, eBay gives you. Your or they want back. to sell it to you out of the package. Yeah. <laughs> so why can't I get the package? Because it would cost more. This, if it's just the loose item, they could stick it in a little bag and mail it to you. Mm -hmm. But it, you don't know what's going on out there because the unfortunately that part of Asia, mm -hmm. you know, China, Taiwan, the Philippines is like the king of counterfeits. Yeah, I've seen a few videos of people getting stuff that were counterfeit. But, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I'm not concerned about that. If it looks close enough, who cares? <sighs> Shame on you. <laughs> I mean, really. What's wrong with you? I mean, if you're getting that close, you know, <laughs> you got company over and they're that close that they can notice it, then you got a lot of the other things going on. So... Who cares? Counterfeits tend to be shoddy material, though. Yeah, that's, it, it is. That's the I mean, one it, main thing. you know, if you want something that, like, okay, if it's a pop, you know, it's like, okay. But if it's something that you spent a lot of money on. If it's a on, pop and it's a counterfeit, the quality's probably better. <laughs> yeah, probably a better paid <laughs> job. Um, But if you paid a hundred plus dollars for the figure, then yeah. Then, you know, you think, 
Oh, wait a minute. I paid for this and you're giving me this crap. Mm -hmm. yeah. But if it's a $10 item, you know, who cares? But, I mean, hey, what do you think? Mm -hmm. Do you think that they're, they're being a little shady with some of those numbers? Or do you completely trust them <laughs> in that? Or, you know, have you run into any other problems or anything else to say about any of the other subjects that we brought up during, uh, during our little talk today? Feel free to jump in and put it in the comment section down below. And we do our best to try to respond to that. Also, remember, if you are also subscribed to Lady Pop Hunter's channel. She is having a giveaway for subscribers. Mm -hmm. Just wanted to point that out. Anything else? Nothing? Nope. Oh. So please do like, share, and subscribe. You know, if mm -hmm. you like the video, thumbs up is always appreciated. Share the video to spread the love. Yeah. I did not forget about the mystery minis unboxing. Mm -hmm. So that will be coming up. I know I did the, I did that big GameStop haul and asked the people about that. And they mm -hmm. said, yeah, because I got a ton of mystery minis from the GameStop really cheap. And they said, yeah, open them. So I'm going to be doing that here shortly. And please do subscribe if you are not a subscriber already. I'm telling you folks, this is probably the best opportunity that you will ever have to subscribe to this amazing channel. Hmm. We have a great deal of potential <laughs> and we need subscribers like you to help spread the love. So, <laughs> so anyway, thanks for watching mm -hmm. and we will see you again soon. So bye. Bye. Hey, quit eating my smirks. I'm going to change your name to Azriel.